The video game Aliens Fireteam will be released this summer, and setting the stage for the carnage sure to ensue is a new prequel novel, Aliens Infiltrator. This was written by Weston Oakes, who is no stranger to the Alien series, previously having written the short story Zero to Hero in the Aliens Bug Hunt anthology novel, as well as the short story May Blood Pave My Way Home in the Predator anthology series If It Bleeds. With Infiltrator, Oakes brings us a full-length alien story focusing on the events taking place within Palace Station on planet LV-985 and the xenomorph experiments that have gone terribly awry. I've had a chance to take an early look at the novel and wanted to share a review today. This will be spoiler-free, but I'll be going to some details about what this entry in the franchise has to offer. Something I think may be worth noting at the top, though, is that Infiltrator was actually envisioned as the second story in a much larger three-part story spanning over three different mediums. The first was meant to be the comic book series, Aliens Colonial Marines Rising Threat, from Dark Horse Comics. Then to follow would be this novel, Infiltrator, from Titan Books, and finally the video game, Fireteam, from Cold Iron Studios. Rising Threat was unfortunately cancelled, so we were never able to get a look at the first part of this larger story in the intended comic book form. Since it remains lost, there's no telling exactly how it may have tied into the novel, but from what I could gather from what I've read about Rising Threat and what I've read in the Infiltrator story, the connection seems to be fairly loose. The only tether to the Rising Threat storyline I was able to recognize was the mention of a vessel named the Katanga, which, according to release synopses, played some importance in the comics. It's from the Katanga, decades after the events meant to take place in Rising Threat, where the employees on Palace Station retrieved their xenomorph specimens. I don't think the intention was ever to have these three stories be entirely dependent on one another, so I can't say it ever felt like any crucial information was missing. Even in acting as a prequel to the upcoming video game, even with the absent comic series, Infiltrator stands self-contained on its own as a very good entry in this franchise. It also just so happens to be among my favorite variety of alien stories, Science Gone Wrong. With Infiltrator, we're introduced to the character Dr. Timothy Honaker, who arrives at Palace Station starting a new contract with Wayland yutani based on the promises of getting to study genuine alien artifacts. His introduction is used as a way to invite us, the reader, into the station and its goings-ons as we learn how it functions and what it's all about. It's a relatively small station. There are seven main sections at play. Manpower, security, engineering, logistics, med lab, communications, and fabrications. Each of these staff sections have their own cliques firmly established, but as the story progresses, a sub-clique of sorts begins to form consisting of former colonial marines. A fair number of the staff on Pala had previously served in the USCM, mostly from security, but also represented in reception technician Victor Rawlings and one of the scientists, Mark Cruz. A theme explored in great detail here is the plight of the veteran marine, how even in retirement and civilian life, the bond, brotherhood, and mindset of a marine cannot be broken. Past traumas are also not so easily forgotten. Through exploration of post-traumatic stress and through the physical impairments left behind after years in the service, the standout character above them all, for me, has to be Cruz. He's a very compelling character, with a haunting backstory of being the lone survivor of a platoon that faced off against a unique form of xenomorph. His memories and his guilt tears at him, but the fascination in these xenomorph creatures drives him forward in exploring them scientifically. The team at Palace Station is looking into different applications that can be derived from biosamples of the aliens. One of the key breakthroughs that they've been working on is a special type of acid-resistant armor. They're studying indigenous creatures of LV-895, along with the xenomorph XX-121 specimens, and they're also working with samples of Plagiarus prepotens, aka the Black Goo. The results, as you could expect, wind our scientists up with some nasty variants of both the xenomorph XX-121 and LV-895 creatures. Not to go into too many spoilers, but clearly, as you can see from the cover art, we do get an interesting new type of alien that has never been seen before, and there's plenty more where that came from, which I don't dare give away. I can't say for sure if we'll see certain alien types depicted in Infiltrator also depicted in the game, but there are things I'd love to see make their way into Fireteam. With that in mind, though, this isn't written in a way to showcase as many different alien types for video game fodder as possible. The scientific studies and exploration of the creatures in Palace Station come from a sincere place and a genuine interest in this iconic creature. The characters presented here, and we the alien fans, have this unquenchable curiosity in what exactly makes these aliens tick, and the questions raised in Infiltrator reflect that strongly. 
How do these creatures communicate? How do they see? Do they sense pheromones? Are they telepathic? How are their ecosystems formed? Is the xenomorph the result of years of evolution, or was it something engineered? The scientists uncover a good deal of discoveries in their research. Some of it is the standard life cycle elements that we've all come to know, and some that we've never seen before. One small detail unveiled here that I found fascinating that I will give away is that they find high levels of serotonin in human hosts carrying embryos. Maybe that's the solution, one of the researchers observes, like a frog in a pot of water that slowly comes to a boil. Makes so unhappy they have a parasite in their body, and they won't mind as much. A detail like this fits right in with the abilities we've seen in the facehuggers previously. If they can release a cyanose-based paralytic upon contact, if they can feed the host oxygen to keep them alive while they deliver the makings for the xenomorph embryo and the host through their invasive process, then surely it could make sense that it may also be able to inhibit hormones that could put the host somewhat at ease. It's these kinds of details that I absolutely love, and they're the kind of details that accumulate and really make it pay off once, inevitably, all hell breaks loose. The story of Infiltrator doesn't take any shortcuts to the alien mayhem, and instead builds itself up by developing the characters and by luring the reader in to a shared sense of intrigue regarding the xenomorphs and the studies being performed. Some characters we come to know very well, and some we can predict are around for a body count, which is fine because there is a large one here when all is said and done. There are some terrifically brutal moments and equally vivid descriptions of them. It gets very nightmarish, the situation turns incredibly dire, and all the conflict we witness unfold against the aliens, against the humans of the facility, and other monsters hiding in the dark corners of the station feels very much earned. There is definitely a focus on the old, which species is worse, adage, and I think it explores that well. There's the ever-looming corporate evil of Wayland yutani of course, as well as conflicts between characters and moral dilemmas experienced by the scientists with their experiments. And yes, as the title suggests, there is an infiltrator. There's a character, for their own reasons, performing espionage against Wayland yutani and in doing so basically sets off the course of events that brings the whole station to disaster. It's not a mystery, we find out very early on the identity of the Infiltrator, but it's in observing this character, making certain decisions and acting in certain ways that becomes the most crucial. After comparatively gargantuan 500 plus page novels in the previous two releases, Alien Phalanx and Aliens into Charybdis, Infiltrator almost feels abnormally short, running at just about 350 pages. I would have been more than content to go through further chapters of the experimentation, further chapters of character histories, and even more of the carnage that unfolds in the finale, but I guess they wanted to go with a more conservative length this time around. Not that I can really fault it for that, I guess I'm just spoiled after the previous two books. Altogether, I think it's very much worth checking out. It stands alone very well, and it's definitely enough to whet your appetite if you're eagerly anticipating Alien's fire team. Alien's Infiltrator is released today, April 20th, so grab yourself a copy. Or if you're more into audiobooks, it's also available on Audible, and the great Bronson Pinchot, who also narrated Alien's Phalanx, is returning to the world of Alien to perform Infiltrator. I thought he did a great job with Phalanx, so I'll definitely be wanting to revisit Infiltrator soon in audiobook form. And what perfect timing it is for a book release. We're just under a week until Alien Day, so we have a new story just in time for the occasion. Hopefully we'll all see some fun stuff unveiled for the big day, and I hope to see you again soon for that. As always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, and be sure to subscribe for all the latest videos from Alien Theory. A very special thanks goes out to Alice Zane, Queen Tier of the Patreon Hive. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for exclusive posts and contests. And if you're interested in supporting In Search of Tomorrow, the 80s sci-fi documentary I'm taking part in, please check the link on the end screen and description below for more information. In the meantime, you can catch up with Alien Theory over social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory. Signing off.